Hello! <laughs> What's that all about? Hello, Stuart Bray here with a quick tutorial on making a realistic looking severed finger like this using gelatine. Uh, this method is pretty quick and easy and you can create a realistic prop probably in about an hour start to finish roughly uh, with everything involved. So all the materials and supplies are listed below this video in the show more info box underneath and also on my blog as well. So I start using uh, Lifeform, uh, which is a life casting silicon from Mold Life, and the reason I use this is because it has absolutely no water in it like alginate does, so it's not going to interfere with the gelatine. Uh, plus it sets in about 5-10 to 10 minutes, although we can speed this up with a hairdryer to, uh, to make things quicker. And the mold that we get from it will last for years, so we can get lots and lots of cast safely out of the mold without it damaging, so uh, it makes sense to use this material. If you've seen the uh, Coraline video number one, uh, then you'll have seen me use this material before. I measure out roughly equal amounts of A and B and mix them together. Now I've got a good three or four minutes working time with this before it starts to thicken up, so there's no rush with it. Make sure it's well mixed. And uh, you don't need any kind of release agent or cream or anything special like that on the skin or hair. Just go straight onto the skin with it. Uh, and once it's set, the silicon will come away easily from hair and skin. So don't be shy. Smear it into every single detail just to make sure you get everything um, and you don't trap any air bubbles. After a few minutes, it starts to thicken up. And I can paste it on thick enough in the mold to keep its shape without distorting once I've taken it off. Um, this looks pretty thick, but it's only about a quarter inch, six to seven millimeters thick on average. Um, so make it you know, a decent thickness so that it holds its shape. So I use a hairdryer to speed up the cure uh, and it's ready to take off after about 10 minutes and it pops off no problem at all. So now we've got our mold, uh, I can melt down some gelatine blocks here using a glass jug and a microwave um, and this lot will melt in about 3 minutes. So it's going to need a bit of colour in it to match my skin. Uh, and I'm going to use a bit of gelatine pigment, some grease paint and some flock. Um, there's more on pigmenting gelatine in the Coraline video number 4. So check that out if you haven't seen that. Okay, I don't want the colour to be too healthy. Because uh, it's supposed to be a severed finger after all. So um, I've put a little bit more blue and a bit more purple in there than normal. Uh, but once the colour's ready, uh, I heat the mix again to make it more liquid. And... Uh, as usual, I'm throwing caution to the wind here, I'm not using any gloves, but I urge you to wear gloves when you're doing this bit, because if you get this stuff on your skin, it'll burn, and it's not very nice at all, so uh, do take care with that. Um, so here I'm going to fill the mold, and then quickly pour it out again, and the reason I'm pouring it out again is because I want to create a thin skin on the inside, and if there are any air bubbles on the surface in there, you'll be able to see them now and pop them. Uh, and if you squeeze the mold like this, that'll help too. Once it's sort of ready to go, I've done the swilling, it's time to top it up again carefully and uh, allow this to cool off and solidify. Now I'm going to speed this up by popping the whole thing in a freezer for about half an hour. And once the gelatine's cooled, we can carefully squeeze the mold carefully and pull the finger out. As you can see, it has every detail, including the shine of the fingernail. Okay, now for the gory stuff. So, I'm going to cut the end off to look like a finger that's been severed. And uh, I'm going to using a craft knife blade, um, just because it's a nice, sharp, clean cut. Um, it does leave a very smooth edge, and that needs a little bit of work to make it look more like a meat joint from a butcher shop. That's the kind of look I'm after. Okay, by heating up a metal sculpting tool, or you could use an old dinner knife uh, with a candle, uh, get the end nice and hot, and then you can use that hot end to melt the, uh, the stump of the finger to make it look kind of lumpy and fatty, just like a real finger stump. You'll need to keep reheating the tool to keep it hot, but uh, it works well. You get a black carbony kind of deposit from the candle, but that just adds to the messy look, so don't worry about that. So once it's sufficiently meaty looking, uh, we can throw some colours on it. I'm going to be using uh, blood toned skin illustrators and some fake blood, but if you don't have any skin illustrators, uh, just go on with some fake blood. So I put it on the stumpy end and I smear it about and try and clean some of it off to make it look more natural. Like um, 
if it's too brushed on it, it kind of looks like you've applied it you want it to look more like it's kind of blood that's kind of dry and flaked off so if you try and clean some of it off it just has a much more natural kind of look to it also very carefully drop some blood color around the nail area and the nail bed just to kind of separate it make it stand out more so you can actually see the fingernail And there you have it, one grim looking severed finger. Um, why not try making several of them and string them onto a necklace the next time you go grocery shopping? Um, if you do, uh, be sure to email me a picture because I'd like to put that on the blog. I think that'd be fun. Um, so there we go. This is Stuart Bray. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. No pun intended. <laughs>